Hey, Friday. What's up, everybody? Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I want to welcome you all back. Hope you guys are all having a great, great day as we are heading into the final day of the week. Question of the day. Do me a favor. Leave it in the comment down below. Do you have a favorite day of the week to trade or a best day of the week to trade? I always find that question interesting, especially on a Friday, uh, because Fridays, uh, I've, I have found from some people, Fridays are really their worst day of the week to trade. So question of the day, do you have a best day of the week to trade, uh, and what is it down below? Stay tuned to the end, and I'll tell you about mine at the end of the video and why. All right, so let's look at the S&P. So in the S&P, we're at 32 points. We are rallying up hard this morning. Uh, yesterday, we had a, uh, a potential breakout area, and unfortunately, we didn't get quality basing in front of this breakout to give us the entry. Now, we did have a potential reversal point here that we never made it back to, and price just rallied up off of that level. So, a good setup, uh, but just price didn't come back into that region. Now, there was a good opportunity to get long on the pullback if you go to a 15-minute chart on maybe to some of these areas here and to catch some of this rally higher. So we have gotten a pretty de decent move off of that level. And now as we've continued to rally in the overnight, we've popped up above the 2900 mark uh, in the S&P. I think that 2900 mark could be a bit of a, a bit of a demand area for later today. Uh, it's already been tested once, however. So what I would need to do is look at it as you know, uh, a confirmation if price comes back into it a second time because it's already got that little wick which hit it the first time. Um, but I still think that it's pretty valid. You know, looking at this on a four-hour, excuse me, a daily chart, we are we're closing in on getting above the uh, the high from a couple of days ago. If we get above there, there's plenty of room for price to continue to run higher. Uh, and so we do have a supply level on the hourly chart up here that I think makes a pretty good target for today. Now, remember this. It is, uh, it is Friday, so if you want to hold something over the weekend, make sure that you maintain a hedge in that position, and we, we talk about options on futures as a way to do that. Now, so the S&P, we just barely missed entry, but the NASDAQ, we did not. So this is our NASDAQ trade from yesterday. Uh, for those of you that were in our live trade room yesterday, hopefully we were able to catch this NASDAQ trade, and it rallied up uh, almost 200 points off of this level from from the entry at 9037 to 9238 was actually over 100 points and uh, 200 points and so some people may still be in that position if you're still in that trade great uh let me know about it as it you know never really has given you a reason to get out of the trade now we were looking at a potential breakout area over here and we did break out uh and then got a little bit of a pullback but it didn't get below any pivots and so continuing, you know, it still gave you the opportunity to stay in that thing and continue to ride it higher. So if we look at the overnight, where might we get another shot to get back in? Well, looking at that same, looking at that same level that we saw in the S&P, it would be right about here. So I'm going to, uh, I have the wrong, uh, wrong drawing tool of available. So that would be the level right in there um, for the potential reversal trade uh, if price comes back into that zone, and let's make that a 15-minute level. And once again, it's already been touched, so it has to be a confirmation entry for us in our trading style. I think there's still breakout opportunities above there as well. Uh, and when I look at what we've done year-to-date, uh, the uh, the NASDAQ is uh, is continuing to, uh, to, to rally. We're closing in on the high. Matter of fact, for year-to-date, uh, if we think about you know where twenty where twenty twenty started, we've actually gone positive in the Nasdaq year to date. So uh, throughout all the coronavirus, we're still continuing to rally higher. Um, you know, and that's one of the things to consider is that we we looked at some of these levels down here, and I genuinely felt as it rallied up that we could reverse and come back down. But once we created a new uh, a new uh, uptrend, the 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 key is stay in that uptrend until the market tells you not to be. You know, there's been lots of people that are trying to pick the top all the way up, and they've been trying to pick the top. And frankly, I think most people probably missed out on most of this run, and that's certainly we don't want it to be the case. Now, looking at so Nasdaq trade was a great trade yesterday. That trade is a great way to end your week. Um, if you were able to pick up those couple of hundred points uh, from that move uh, and you uh, you got a little run. Crude oil, 
not so much. <laughs> so I did. Uh, we we've been looking at the September contract as our as our main trading contract, and I had a decent little fifteen minute level here uh, that the market just came down into and just blew right through. There's really no. Um, there was no uh, basing in front of the level. Everything said, "Hey, this should uh, this should work out pretty well, at least for a two to one." And then price just blew right through that level. So now we're kind of going sideways after that zone. So looking at where we may go after this, if I go to the one hour chart, we're kind of in a range at this point. But uh, that range that we're in is below this thirty, this twenty nine area. So could be an opportunity to sell maybe a, a bear call spread up in here against one of those positions if you're an options trader. Uh, if you're not an options trader, why not? Go to tradersarmy.com, learn how to trade options. It's not going to cost you a whole bunch of money, and it's going to be fun, and you're going to and you're gonna do better in trading. Anyway, um, I think we could have a breakdown level below this 2730 as a potential area uh, moving forward. So let's move over and take a look at gold. So gold gave us a huge rally yesterday as we had a big move up uh, in the late U.S. morning hours, and unfortunately, where we had a potential breakout trade, didn't give us any basing in front of the level to tell us to really get in. On a smaller time period, there was a bit of basing, but that's, I think, where our potential entry point now exists, which is right here where the breakout was. We've got this unbalanced wick over wick level where we could see price reverse with an opportunity to get long. So let's look for this 1720 region as an opportunity for later today. Um, moving over to bonds and currencies, if I take a look at our ZN, uh, the, the bonds really also rallied with gold. So our ZN level was a small uh, was a small stop out loss as well as price just hit through there and just boom, continue to rally up. Now I'm not dead with the level though because the level did leave behind in its wake this area here, this wick over wick level um, which is a fairly small wick over wick in the middle of this big move up. And oftentimes I see those being very effective. Now there's another one down here that's closer to the pivot, which is also typically pretty effective. So I'm going to leave both of those in play. And this really came out yesterday on the, on the conversation that there's the potential that the U.S. Uh, bonds may go into a negative territory, which I think that news spiked those bonds straight up. And so you're going to get uh, a stop out in some of those in some of those positions. Uh, looking at the Aussie dollar, so our Aussie dollar, we did get a little breakout inside of the Aussie. If you did not uh, catch the breakout, you had this little reversal level here uh, as we got that, uh, that little area here on the reversal. So a very strong move away from that level. Uh, now moving up, so that was, a, that was really another strong level for the day yesterday. Um, looking at this area here as our kind of potential retest zone, if price comes back into this region, I think you may get another bite at the apple right in here uh, after the uh, after the big breakout. So keep an eye on this level for later today. Uh, looking at the euro, so in our euro position, our euro position we had set up for a confirmation short, and we did on a 15-minute chart. Now remember, it's a 15-minute chart, so we've got to look at the the purple line, 15 minutes, we did have our entry right here, right? Price came into the level more than halfway, and it triggered the entry. One, two, three, four, five, six candles later, price had gone quite literally nowhere as we were still right on our entry point. And so uh, following our six candle rule, that oftentimes actually becomes a breakout to the upside, and that's exactly what happened, is that it broke out then to the upside and, uh, and price moved higher. So... Uh, now we need to remove that level as it can't be one that we're going to use going forward. And looking at our one hour chart, I think it's okay to look at this area up here for a potential breakout, provided that we get the basing. Uh, Canadian dollar. So our Canadian dollar has come into our level. Uh, and now that level actually was found, uh, the, that level was found as its wick over wick on the four hour chart. Um, but even on the hourly chart, we've come into the zone and really gone nowhere. So here's what I would do if you're in that trade. Take your stop and move it to break even. Price can still move your way, and you can capture a lot of profit. 
Uh, and if it doesn't move your way, there's no reason to be in it and to take a loss. So this is just a simple way to manage the trade based on our six candle rule. So if you do happen to still be in it, maybe you're in it from yesterday or from the overnight, I think it's a good opportunity to take your stop, move it to break even. You're still, you'd still be in the trade at a break even spot. And if you're looking at the six candle rule on the, on, um, on the four hour chart, you don't technically have six candles yet, but I don't love uh, the price action we've gotten. And so I think it's worth moving your stop to break even at this point. Uh, Great British pound and Japanese yen. So looking at the pound, we did uh, have a really nice pound level. Uh, this was from Thursday, or excuse me, from Wednesday's daily market commentary uh, in the Great British Pound was our reversal area right here. So if you were able to catch that from Wednesday's daily market commentary, leave me a comment below. Let me know. Uh, very nice move away. Uh, and then uh, now it looks like we've come back into this region here, which was formed late la or, uh, in the early part of last night's trading, but it's not really giving much reaction out of this. I don't know that I would really want to do too much uh, on this with our four hour being as sideways as it is until we've shown that we can get kind of below this region here. Uh, and then the Japanese yen prices have continued to rally on this one, although a little bit of sideways here as we're kind of wrapping up the week. Uh, on our hourly chart. And so with that sideways price action, I don't see a whole lot to do at the moment um, in terms of reversal trades. Uh, maybe if we go to the 15 minute, we will spot something that's cleaner. Um, as Austin, as, as Dr. Evil would say, how about no? Uh, there's not a whole lot that's better here. That's a, that is a bit cleaner. So uh, my question of the day, by the way, so kind of wrapping up the, 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 the session, my question of the day was what was your favorite day of the week to trade? My best seems to be that my best day of the week to trade are Tuesdays. Um, Tuesdays to me are my best day of the week to trade uh, when I'm trading in the weekday for short-term intraday trades. But actually, my favorite day is Sundays. Sunday night are my favorite day of the week to trade um, because it sets up the the everything for the coming week, and that's where I get my gap and go scenarios that work out the best. But remember, question of the day is, what is your favorite day of the week to trade? Do you like to trade Fridays? Maybe Fridays aren't your day at all. So leave it in the comment section down below. I want to get as much as we can possible. So I think it would be great. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. Until next week, I'll see you.